I mean, more than anything, just looking at the waves will inspire you no matter what. But yeah, having somebody who is grown up in this town and, and uh, you know, a fellow countryman, yeah, he's going to be inspired by the youngster because generally that's what happens. Jordy's had a couple of victories here in the past, went back to back. Won his first CT event here at Jeffreys Bay. It was an emotional win, backed it up the following season. Italo almost got the, the win last time we were uh, here. Got second to Gabriel Medet. But great to see Yago back, and he dropped some big numbers at that last stop as we see Italo get going now. And he has had some, some magic rides in those warm-up sessions in the lead-up to this opening round as he tucks in for the barrel. Got a whole lot of speed at the moment. Great speed control as he finds the exit but gets slapped down by the lip on the closeout. Still there. But still manages to hang on, oh, wow. re-emerges. No one really kind of hangs on to maneuvers like this guy. <laughs> I mean, and he's uh, grown up on a right-hand point break, so he knows how to be quick in transition. Two beautiful snaps here as this wave runs. Smaller waves are going to run pretty quickly. Uh, and this one, again, didn't disappoint in that. I mean, there he tucks in. I didn't think, oh, man, why? How is he going to be able to find his way out of that one, which he does. Very clean exit there, but then the thing lands on him. It's, I don't know how he pulls it off, but he is just glue foot. He actually made it out of the barrel pretty clean. It just uh, had another section that landed on top of him. Well, let's see what Jordy Smith can do. Has had a, a perfect heat here in the past. He'd love to do that again, but this way is not going to pan out for him. We're going to be focusing on is that deep and technical barrel riding. That's going to be rewarded, expecting a decent score as we see Yago up now. And this guy, when he gets going, has amazing flow, great style. He's a big dude, Yago, and he can let go of some pretty solid moves. As he just really looks to thread this one together. Hasn't had that big exclamation. It is different than uh, if anyone else here. He doesn't look like he's trying to get down the line too fast, and he always does. Advantage here for Yago Dora is that he is similar in stature as Jordy Smith, but able to extend and really showcase that big backhand hook. And that's what he's going to have to do to showcase that point of difference and just, uh, you know, use the elastic and the strength of it. That was a beautiful mix of maneuvers here. And he was able to complete this ride. So this could be a good score here for Yago. Yeah, he needed uh, a couple of big turns at the finish of this one too. Because this, this wave had floats, just places that board on top of the lip again, rides the roof for a long time, draws off the bottom, smashes through the pocket, now looks to set up the pit, tucks in, rolling through this one. And he'll climb the roof once oh. again, and he gets absolutely slammed trying to complete that manoeuvre. Straight on the flat water. High impact landing. Are you all right? Looks good. Appears to be. Wow, that was a hard landing. I mean, he wanted to pull it so bad. Good turns laid down on this wave, but the he left one. some points on it with the incompletion on the finish. But look at this, just ah, the full extension, and he cuts it short to somehow keep going down the line. I mean, this is just great positioning, a great read. I mean, he would never have made this wave had he not been able to do those floaters like that, and then just hammers this section. Able to stuff himself in, nice and deep behind the curtain there, and then just this fall, very hard. He pulls this off, we're going to see an excellent number. Yeah, Jordy Smith, uh, you know, as we see the replay again, you know, his transition turns, that there's so much in them. They still warrant great reward. Uh, Jordy Smith also has surgeon-like precision when he places his board on the, the roof of the wave. Uh, you know, unfortunately, didn't get the completion here, Pete, but he just has so much speed when he, he's riding the roof of the wave. And he doesn't look like he's even trying to get that speed. He just knows how to place the rail at the right uh, angles to be able to get the projection and have that water flying through the concaves and get down the line. That's why it's well rewarded when you, you do stick it. When you get it right, you get that excellent score quite often if you've done the work on the outside. Jordy on an insider, tucks into the tube. He'll find his way through and now goes to the reverse, doesn't quite stick it. Well, one thing they did say in that judges list today, elements that, uh, you know, they were going to be rewarding uh, progressive maneuvers. So, you know, J-Bay is one of those places that were all about the foundation of the rails and keeping them clean. But, hey, we saw what Felipe was doing. You know, you can get above the lip here. Why not? Welcome back to the show. Waves approaching here in heat number two. At the moment, Yago Dora holds a, a good position. And he's going to tap into this one. Nice hit there. This guy's got great flow. And he is really returning to form after suffering a nasty foot injury earlier this season what about that hit really solid stuff here from the brazilian who gets absolutely smashed just one way for him 
and he'll get his opportunity. We'll see a replay of Yago's last wave. So a little smaller wave, but again, he picked this one because it had some pace that he was going to be able to go more vertical with his approach, and he does that. Uh, that was beautiful again. This one snapping, opening up. So three big solid turns, but this is where he clips his heels, uh, you know, trying to get down the line. Yeah, and I don't think that Italo would be surfing to that number. I think he has to understand that he needs to at least match Jordy's score here uh, in order to keep him close. Here's Jordy again. Nice looking wave. Belts it through the pocket. And now just glides through a, a nice well-rounded carve. Banking oh. off the bottom. Little sticky there. And he's going to kick out of this one. 14 and a half minutes to go. And, uh, yeah, 2.74 is all he needed to get into first. Uh, and now going back to live action with Yago up once again. And he only needs a 5.07 to get himself back into the lead because Geordie has taken that number one position at the moment. He's going to kick out of this one, though. One person we haven't spoken too much about in this heat so far because he's only had one wave. So this is an important event. As uh, you know, you know that there's a bunch of youngsters who are vying for that, those spots. Um, and now finally Ichlo is going to pull the trigger here with 10 minutes to go. Let's see what he can do. He's got an amazing speed on the backhand, the ability to release the tail and commit to his moves without losing touch with the open face. Great combination to get things started here. He's on his way, only needs a 5.24. Hammers the pocket there. Nice wall standing up in front. It has been the combination of some big major turns already on this wave, and Italo's not done with it just yet. Again, maintaining pace beautifully with this ride. It's a, a really clean read as he throws that board vertical into the pocket again and now climbs the roof and he is just hammering this one all the way down the line incomplete on the final maneuver but i don't think it's going to matter i think he'll get the score that he needs yeah no pretty easily going to get the score needed and come out of that maneuver with plenty of speed losing nothing yeah and again that came from where he grew up surfing is a little bit of a tight uh running right hander you know good choice of wave here i mean he waited a long time to pick this wave and it's a great backhand wave because it gave him the pace to be able to really project into those maneuvers he's not chasing it like we've seen him have to do on a lot of waves throughout the warm-ups now this one gave him the ability to really hook into the lip which he has done he thought he's going to be too far behind here but then what it opens up and gives him ability to rattle off a few more maneuvers. So this is going to be the number needed. Um, I feel like it's going to be comparable to Jordy Smith, even with the fall here, just because of the amount of moves he had done. Well, Jordy Smith up at the moment, and he has his foot to the floor. Plenty of speed to use on this section. Punches the lip. This wave stretching out, but Jordy's going to get back out in front of it. There's a, a savage hit. And just exploding through the lip, deep in the barrel. He's there. Still going in this one. Can he punch through the curtain? Unfortunately, he can't. And it's a big sigh from the local crowd, but he got a lot of travel time inside the pit there. Eight minutes to go. Waiting on scores for Italo to drop. He's going to take the lead here in a moment. But he's outside of Italo right now, so that's important, I think, in this last exchange. As you watch this wave here again, smaller wave, so it's going to run down the line pretty quickly. He was able to do that first snap. He had to cut it short, as knowing full well that he's going to have to get around it. But that was beautiful because he came underneath it. You saw how he cut up underneath it. He's there. He rode this one for a long time. He pulls out of this barrel, and it's a deep technical barrel, right? And he's going to get the number needed. Oh, anticipation is just one of the big keys here at Jeffreys Bay. You know, you start getting excited about what's coming your way from the, the moment you swap, spot those big swell lines and then the surfers get up, they race towards that first section. And Yago has let go of a decent opening manoeuvre here. Big section standing up, beautiful turn there, well placed. And still has a lot of room to move down the line here. He's on his way to the number required. He needs oh, a 7.17. Yeah. And this has definitely been the best wave. And Yago is starting to really throw down some of the best surfing that we've seen in this heat as well. What a combination. And he celebrates. You know, it completely took the pressure of the decision out of his hands because it was a just, just a big hors d'oeuvre moment, as if I'm not going this one. Yeah, right. And uh, he absolutely lit it up. I mean, just look at where it is. You can see that it moves off the reef slightly, so it stays open. He doesn't have to race too hard. And then every time he came around, it was just a nice big vertical section. There it was, straight up. That was a just horrendous snap. I mean, just straight into it. As we see behind him now, Geordie Smith setting up the tube it's a foamy one really tricky read can he find his way through it it doesn't look like he will but we're looking forward to seeing the replay of yago's right yeah. smashed well it's not done and, and remember he's got that seven already 
So uh, it's unlikely Yago is going to be uh, improving on the, the 5.17. That'll be his backup number. So Italo with a big advantage already hanging on to a 7. And with 35 seconds to go, you know, it's likely he'll be chasing a score here, Pete. Yep. And uh, he surfed this wave very well. So he's and he celebrating. Yeah, and he, uh, he was only looking to get rid of a 5. Yeah. And uh, you say that just by the, that we kind of caught, what, about three quarters of that ride, maybe. Let's see it from the top here. Yeah, he had to race it in the beginning, didn't he? But there's his first section. Oh, that was the so we did see the whole wave. Um, we didn't see the outside maneuver there, but that was a pretty unique carve. And then this float, I mean, he covers 20 meters there on top of the lip. And if you're going to do a floater, you might as well do it as long a hang time as you can get. Well, there was nothing in that first carve. I mean, by Italo's standard, he didn't hit that section properly. Well, um, it, it was still decent, but I think the, the points will come for what he did down the line. But right. a huge number for Yago Dora there, 8.67. So the requirement for Italo out of that ride is a 6.52. Yeah, and it feels like it's probably close, right? I mean, again, we're going to have to sit there and they're going to do comparisons. Um, we'll probably be waiting for a little while. What a heat up. Oh, cool. I love calling that. That was awesome. All right. Well, we're going to take a break and bring in Paul Evans and Laura Enneba. Big heats coming your way here at the Corona Open, J-Bay.